Okay, so I'm going to talk about proxying HTTP3 with Connect UDP in Envoy. This is a joint work with Eric, Avi, and David. So before I talk about Connect UDP, let's see the current landscape of proxying protocols to understand why we needed a new protocol. So the simplest approach of uh, proxying would be using a regular TCP or UDP proxy uh, which simply forwards packets based on five tuple. This approach may have some use cases, but it's limited to static forwarding rule based on five tuple, so it doesn't allow a client to connect to an arbitrary target through a proxy. So to overcome this limitation, the SOX protocol was developed a long time ago, and it, it defined request commands to let clients open a TCP or UDP socket to, a, to an arbitrary target address port. However, it sends those information in plain text. So anyone who watches the network can see whether the client, uh, which, which uh, servers a client access to. So the HTTP connect method is an HTTP method uh, that serves a similar purpose to SOX. But with uh, HTTPS or TLS, it uh, hides the target information from network eavesdropper naturally. However, it only supports creating TCP connections to targets, um, not, UDP, uh, not UDP. So you cannot use connect for UDP-based protocols for proxying. Someone may argue that we can just use VPN protocols like OpenVPN or, or IPsec or WireGuard, but they require admin privileges, so um, they may not be always a viable, viable option to choose. So to overcome those limitations, Connect UDP was recently standardized in IETF. It allows HTTP clients to send UDP packets to an arbitrary target through a proxy. So a client sends payload data as HTTP messages, and a proxy sends those data as UDP datagrams to, uh, over to the target. It is defined in the RFC 9298, and it supports all existing versions of HTTP. So for HTTP one and uh, for HTTP two and HTTP three, the connect UDP request is sent as extended connect request, and for HTTP one point one, it's sent as an upgrade request. So I will show you how this works with more details in the protocol level, actually. So let's see how uh, uh, this works. A client uh, to establish a new UDP tunnel, a client first needs to send a connect UDP request in the following format to a proxy. So in, in H283, it's extended connect request, and it, it's how it looks like. And let's focus on the protocol and path header fields now. To indicate it's a connect UDP request, the protocol header field is set to connect UDP. And the target address port information is specified in the path header field in the URI template. And um, the, tar uh, the target address can be a domain name, and in that case, the proxy must perform DNS resolution before sending a response. And then um, proxy creates a UDP socket to the target address and port. And unlike connect, um, it's a UDP socket, so no handshake to be done at this set of phase. And once the socket is created, the proxy sends a success response to the client like this. And as soon as the client receives a response, it assumes that tunnel um, is established and starts to send data using HTTP datagrams. So the HTTP datagrams was also recently standardized in RFC 9297, and I'll explain more about this and why, why we needed this one later, in the later slides. So with Connect UDP, uh, we can overcome the limitations of um, existing proxying protocols I mentioned earlier. It supports an arbitrary target, um, and it provides useful security and pri privacy properties um, uh, like HTTP Connect, and it can be implemented in the application level, and most importantly, it supports UDP protocols unlike Connect. However, I would like to emphasize that Connect UDP is not just for um, UDP tunneling. Combined with QUIC or H3, it unlocks the power of application level proxying. So with um, H2 or H1, um, a loss in a stream can block other independent HTTP streams because it's TCP. 
But with HTTP3 downstreams, we can now multiplex multiple um, quick connections or HTTP3 connections in a single quick or H3 connections without this head of, head of line blocking problem. Also, the traffic to the proxy and also the target looks exactly like a normal, normal HTTP traffic. So it provides excellent censorship resistance um, property. And also, obviously, the traffic is encrypted uh, with TLS 1.3 inside Quick. So Connect EDP was uh, standardized in IETF mask working group. And there are multiple of efforts going on in the group to leverage those excellent properties of quick-based application-level proxying in other use cases. Um, so to explain how we implemented Connect UDP in Envoy, let's first look at how Envoy handles an um, incoming HTTP request in a very high level. So first, TCP uh, packets or UDP datagrams are received through a TCP or UDP listener in Envoy. And the Envoy D, uh, codec inside, uh, HTTP codec inside HTTP Connection Manager decodes the decrypted byte uh, streams as HTTP messages. And the router, is respons router filter in HCM is responsible for selecting a cluster based on the configured routing rule. Um, and then the cluster manager chooses a host in the cluster and the corresponding upstream connection pool to that host um, is used to send a request to upstream through one of the connections in the upstream connection pool. So for UDP tunnel establishment, we've made uh, the following changes. So I'll explain the details of those changes um, in, the, in the next slides. So let's first focus on the changes made inside um, HTTP Connection Manager. So Envoy uh, internally normalizes HTTP2 and HTTP3 extended connect requests to HTTP 1.1 upgrade requests. So this is not specific to connect UDP. This is mainly to use the same um, HTTP upgrade logic regardless of the HTTP downstream um, protocol level. So this is an example of connect UDP request headers. And it becomes the sorry, so it becomes the upgrade request in Envoy like this. So as you can see, uh, the extended connect method is transformed to get request uh, with upgrade token in H1 inside Envoy. And um, the upgrade header field value is set to the same um, protocol value header field in the, in the get, re get request. And secondly, uh, the second change we made uh, inside HTTP Connection Manager was to make Envoy rewrite the authority or host header field. So existing Envoy codes and filters assume that the filters, um, the target address in the is located inside the authority or host header field. But as you can see in the Connect UDP case, the target address information is inside a path header field. So we wanted to make the subsequent uh, Envoy filters work just correctly with the connect UDP request. So what we did was we made uh, um, HCM just rewrite the host header part with the host, uh, I said, the target address information in the path, he path header field value. So now the subsequent uh, filters like router filter or any other HTTP filters would just work um, normally. And then we made some changes in the router filter. And as I mentioned, the router, is, router filter is, is responsible for routing a, 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 a request to a correct um, upstream cluster. So we made um, existing connect matcher, which originally only matched um, HTTP connect methods, um, match also the HTTP connect UDP, uh, connect UDP request. So now connect matcher can match connect UDP request. And we also introduced a new upgraded type token, connect UDP, so that uh, a routing rule can specific specifically match connect UDP request. So in this example, connect UDP config YAML file, uh, um, HTTP connect UDP request will be routed to a upstream cluster one. So now let's take a look at 
the upstream connection pool part. So Envoy associates a connection pool to each upstream host or endpoint. And previously, Envoy had two types of upstream connection pools. There was a HTTP connection pool, which is used for HTTP upstreams. So Envoy creates multiple TCP or quick connections um, and reuses them for performance and efficiency reasons. And there's a TCP connection pool, and this is specifically for HTTP connect method. So Envoy creates only one new connection for each target host in the HTTP connect case. So it's not really a connection pool. And Envoy keeps the mapping between a downstream HTTP stream and a created TCP uh, uh, connection so that it can convert incoming HTTP data frames into TCP by streams. So we need to implement, it, uh, we need to implement something similar for UDP, UDP upstream and UDP connection pool to support connect UDP. So we added UDP upstream handling code that creates a UDP uh, datagram socket inside UDP connection pool. So for, um, and if the socket creation um, succeeds, the UDP upstream code as the success status code to the response like this. Then it stores the mapping between the HTTP downstream and the corresponding UDP socket created like HTTP connect case so that it can pass HTTP data to the right upstream socket. So now let's switch gear to the data path. I'll explain how we changed Envoy to enable uh, data exchange through the established UDP tunnel. So as I mentioned earlier, HTTP datagrams and capsules are used to send uh, data after UDP tunnel is established. And we've made the following changes in the HTTP3 codec and upstream connection pool to support um, HTTP3 datagrams and capsule. So before talking about HTTP datagrams, uh, let, let me first explain um, the issue of HTTP3 or quick proxying and to explain why we needed HTTP datagrams. So for um, HTTP3 proxying or quick proxying in general, First, client and proxy establish a H3 connection. Then a client sends a connect UDP request to the proxy as an HTTP uh, stream uh, to establish a UDP tunnel to a target server. And through this stream, a client establishes a quick connection um, to the target. Then a client can send uh, quick or H3 streams through this inner connection. And as you can see, quick connections are nested in H3 or quick proxying case. And this can cause uh, the following issues. The most important one is double loss recovery. Uh, when there's a packet loss, the both inner and outer quick connections um, react, react to that packet loss and does redundant, redundant retransmission. And this can exa exacerbate the network congestion um, and degrades the network performance quite significantly. And there's another problem of nested congestion control. Um, and this can make the client overreact to a packet loss. And, and it can lead to network underutilization. So to solve this problem, we needed a way to send data unreliably in H3 stream. So to introduce this unreliability, um, quick datagram is standardized in RFC 9221. And this allows an application to bypass the retrans retransmission mechanism of quick as necessary. And RFC 9227 um, H3 datagram format is, uh, was defined, and it uses a quick datagram to send HTTP data unreliably. So with those new two constructs, we can send the datagrams unreliably in H3. So the previous picture is changed uh, like this. The outer H3 stream can now become unreliable, so we no longer have the nested loss recovery problem or nested congestion control. 
Uh, what about in H1 and H2? So the unreliable delivery is impossible inherently, inherently because they run over TCP. Uh, but RFC 9297 still defined a datagram capsule to allow exchanging um, HTTP datagrams um, even when there is a client or server or even proxy that do not support H3 or unreliably de unreliable delivery mechanism. It, uh, but it allows proxy can com convert the, um, the datagram capsule to H3 datagrams when H3 connection is available in the path. So it lets client to indicate it wants to send the datagrams unreliably whenever possible to utilize the underlying transport uh, protocol's unreliable delivery mechanism as much as possible. So I will not delve into the details of it. If you're interested, please look at the RFC. Now let's briefly see how Envoy handles the H3 datagram and capsules with our changes. So first, um, we made H3 codec um, decode H3 datagrams as datagram capture for normalization. And this is mainly for um, our internal Envoy processing logic can just um, do everything on top on, on, on datagram capture regardless of the HTTP downstream version. So for upstream connection pool, um, it can just decapsulate datagram capsule and send the payload as UDP, uh, UDP datagrams upstream. So it becomes UDP diagrams uh, from the perspective of the target server. And um, in the upstream to downstream case, it's pretty much the exact opposite. The UDP diagram becomes um, encapsulated into datagram capsule. And for H3 downstream connection, the H3 codec uh, encode the datagram capsule into H3 datagram using um, quick datagram. So uh, now let's take a quick look at a demo of this feature in action. So there was no uh, widely available uh, Connect UDP client because um, Connect UDP was recently standardized. So our team created a test task client for Connect UDP request. And I'll just use the same config file in the Envoy proxy um, GitHub repository. I should have duplicated the display. Okay, um, let me see. All right, so I am running uh, the Envoy server now, and this is running in my laptop. So as you can see, I, I disabled the logging um, and just enable the access log to see, uh, to, to easily see what's going on on the Envoy side. Yeah, this is a command for the client. Um, as you can see, um, you can focus on this part first. This is the, the address of the proxy, which is running inside my laptop. And this is the port number. And this is the target address. So let's first connect to uh, google.com, which supports H3. Um, so yeah, as you can see, on the Envoy proxy side, it received um, HTTP uh, connect UDP request and it's transformed to upgrade request. So as you can see, it's actually internally normalized it into get request. And you can see the uh, target information in the path field and uh, the target information is, is correctly parsed into, into Envoy. And on the right side, the client shows that um, it received, so the kind of order is the opposite, but it first received the success code for the successful UDP tunnel establishment. And, and the above, we can see the HTML uh, content that Google.com returned. And maybe we can go try um, YouTube.com as well, and it works fine as well. If you want me to try a non-Google server, Cloudflare, let me see, Cloudflare also provide a test uh, server for H3. As you can see, yeah, this one also works fine. All right. So obviously, the major use case of Connect UDP is, is enabling, enabling H3 proxying. Well, with H3, a client can create um, H3 connection to a proxy 
and then it can create multiple HT3 connections through that proxy without the head of line um, blocking problem I mentioned earlier. So it really uh, enables the high performance application level proxying. And it also provides excellent security and privacy and citizenship resistance thanks to the quick and TLS 1.3. And, and specifically, uh, with H3 proxying, the target servers can only see the address of the proxy, not the client, because the UDP tunnel is established between proxy and target. So it provides a kind, uh, some degree of IP address privacy for client. But the proxy can still see the target address and watch which, ver uh, which servers a client is connecting to. So can you hop over this limitation? We can hide even the target address from the proxy by just introducing a second proxy and do two-hop pro proxying. And in this setup, a client opens a H3 connection to the second proxy through the first proxy using a connect UDP like this. And it uses that stream to connect, uh, to talk to the second proxy. Then the client again uses connect UDP um, to create uh, multiple HT3 connection to the target like this. So in this scenario, multiple HT3 streams are nested inside outer HT3 stream from the client's perspective. Because the outer stream is encrypted with quick between the client and proxy two, the proxy one cannot see the connect UDP request sent to proxy two. So it hides the target address from the, private, uh, from the proxy one's point of view. And proxy two sees the target address, but it sees all those streams coming from the proxy one's address, not the client's, because the, the UDP tunnel is established between proxy one and proxy two. So it hides the client's address from the proxy two. So as a result, no proxies have complete information of which client accessing which target servers. And this idea of two-op proxying for IP address protection has already been realized and deployed. Um, Safari provides iCloud private relay that uses the exact same architecture I showed you earlier. And Chrome has been also announced, uh, uh, announced to provide the same service. And this two-op proxying with Connect UDP case, the second proxies are run by third-party parties so that no parties can have the full picture of the user traffic. And this is actually quite similar to Tor network if you're, if you're familiar with that. And it has pros and cons compared to that. So in the case of uh, privacy proxying services, clients are authenticated. So uh, the services use blind signature scheme to, pro to hide the user identity entity when the proxying is actually done. Um, so this can potentially provide a better usability for web browsing. Because if you have ever used Tor browser, um, the last IP address of the Onion router are, are often blocked, or the, um, the, you should, the client should, should normally solve CAPTCHA, or their products are often blocked because the traffics are often associated with um, abnormal or malicious activities. So authenticated traffic can provide some better um, uh, normal web browsing experience. So that, that's a, one of the cons. But the, uh, compared to Tor network, um, those services currently only provide two hop pro proxying. Uh, on the other hand, Tor network provides three hub proxy. And, but I think the both um, Tor network, I mean Tor network and privacy and proxying technologies are not orthogonal, so they can actually um, introduce the pros of the other approaches. For example, in privacy proxy, it can uh, just introduce one more or several more uh, proxies with connect UDP easily. So to conclude, um, Connect UDP unlocks the power of HTTP proxying and to a new level with Quick and H3. And Envoy is the first open source uh, proxy that supports Connect UDP. So um, I believe that we believe that Envoy supporting Connect UDP will accelerate the adoption of this uh, proxying technology. And this is the end of my talk, um, and I'll be happy to take your question. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
So you're specifically asking about the privacy proxying um, services? Okay, so um, so this is mainly for you know hiding the the IP address from the end servers. So for example, uh, when you're just when, when a normal user just um, browse websites, and they, those websites often have um, often have um, tracking service embedded. And the IP address and as you know, the third-party cookies are now being uh, being gone. Although some browsers still support it, but IP address is actually a very powerful identifier to identify each individual user because IP address uh, um, uh, can uh, barely changes for for normal users actually. So this means that it, the IP address um, using the IP address like there's a lot of incentives to using the IP address as a an identifier to identify I'm um, to uh, to link the identity of the user to their to their uh, web browsing history. So by providing those uh, privacy proxying services or multi-hop uh, proxying services, uh, we can unlink that uh, linkability. So kind of it protects, could potentially protect the privacy of the uh, browser users from the uh, from those maybe third-party um, trackers or, or things like that. Yeah. You're asking uh, if it can be used for hiding the server IP address. Um, so for this one, it's a little tricky to do that because you know um, here a client established those two tunnels right to the server, and the way the privacy is enforced is actually this kind of onion. It's very similar to Tor. So your request is actually uh, um, kind of routed through the proxy. So the and the server cannot see the um, cannot see the IP address of the client. So I think with just with this uh, technique, I think it'll be a little tricky to do that, but yeah. Yeah, because I think it's one uh, technology for enabling different services, right? Like if it would be sort of analog, uh, it would be Oh, I see. Well, um, I'm, I'm not completely sure about that, but yeah, maybe. Uh, probably possible, maybe possible. I mean, we can just reverse the traffic direction actually from the server to the client, so maybe it might be possible. Yeah, but the, currently the main use case is for, for hiding the IP address of the clients. Okay, yeah, um, good question. So the first part you were asking um, whether the captures are, are decapsulated in the, in the proxies? Okay, I think I'm, I'm not sure I fully understand your question, but the, so here just um, to show this again, um, Maybe it'll be help to understand the part. So, as I mentioned, the the there's there's a two part. One is UDP connection and UDP tunnel, and there's a separate part which is quick connection or H3 connections. So um, the UDP connect UDP tunnel is established between client and proxy one, and proxy one and proxy two. So there are two separate UDP um, connections, but the quick connection H3 uh, connections is established between first client and proxy, and then and and then client and proxy two. Yes, that's correct. Yes, you're right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So uh, right, so you're right. So and for the second question, yeah, that's a very good question. So obviously, you might think that um, going through those um, those routers, uh, remember, proxies, can increase the latency, and um, but but you know, uh, in often not the case that I mean I mean even though the packets are going through a, a geographically longer distance, it may actually get better performance. For example, um, I think I saw that because uh, 
Apple Private Relay has been already deployed and they have some data uh, together. And they showed that actually they saw some performance gains in some cases because, you know, many um, the target servers do not support H3. So they have to actually use um, H2 to, or H, even H1 to connect to an end target. But with this uh, privacy proxying, uh, from the client to the proxy to, the traffic can be actually delivered through H3. And then only the last half can, will be delivered to H2. So actually in that case, this can actually increase the, uh, improve the latency or even bandwidth. So there are some um, cases where actually this kind of proxying even provide better for performance, even though it goes through the, the, the proxies. Oh, sorry, sorry, could you say it again? So yeah, it's, it's a little hard to uh, listen to, I mean, um, uh, catch your question. So maybe I can talk to you offline, yeah? Yeah, we have the, the uh, folks, it was working really well this morning. We have the, uh, we have the question line, the question mic, if anybody wants to use it. Um, but yeah, you can take that up offline. Any more questions? We're actually, we're actually out of time. So uh, if anybody else wants to uh, catch up, we can yeah, do that thank afterwards. You. Thank you very much, great talk.